Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. Now, I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. Um, I wanted to tell the story of my kind of journey to uh, being a gardener in books and TV shows that have really shaped the way I think about gardening. And I guess it all started a long, long time ago, probably when I was 13 years old. And on the way home from school, I used to go to the library and uh, so I'd cycled to the library and I've just picked up this book, The uh, Complete Book of Self-Sufficiency by uh, John Seymour. And I opened this book and I just like, I just was amazed. You know, I, I just fell in love with it. Um, you know, the idea of being self-sufficient or self-reliant, um, you know, just really, really appealed to me. You know, back then as a 13 year old, now I'd actually grown up um, with a house, you know, modest little, you know, um, semi-detached, three-bedroom semi-detached house, but it had a really long garden. And half of the garden was lawn, uh, the other half was an orchard, and we had like 50 different fruit trees and lots of different berries and things like that. And we didn't actually garden much in the way of vegetables, but my grandma, she did. And um, my next-door neighbour, he was really passionate about vegetable growing, so I was kind of exposed to that whole scene. Uh, and we got backyard eggs and all, and all that sort of thing, uh, even though we just lived in the suburbs. But yeah, when I got this book, The Complete Book of Self-Sufficiency, it just, you know, it just really opened my eyes. Uh, a few years after that, of course, the TV show The Good Life came out, and I can't exactly remember the timing, but that was, you know, again, just, I just really, really appealed to me. You know, it was great comedy, but, you know, just the lifestyle, I just thought, yeah, this is the way I want to live. And then, basically, I forgot the whole thing. Uh, you know, trained as an engineer, moved into IT, all sorts of program, project management, technical management, strategy, architecture, you know, all of these sorts of things, all in big IT industry and the aerospace industry. Um, and my kind of dream of self-sufficiency just, you know, just drifted away, really. And then... I don't know, we got some sort of cheap book catalogue through the door and in there was the the book, the new complete book of self-sufficiency by John Seymour and that was an up-to-date version of uh, that classic that I'd read, you know, when I was probably 13 years old. And it got me thinking again and it got me like, yeah, I should start gardening in the back garden. And I put in a couple of raised beds and planted some uh, strawberries and some raspberries and some bits and pieces like that. And, I absolutely loved it. You know, all I was growing was like just, you know, maybe one meal a day's worth of veg for, you know, two or three months or something like that. But I started to really enjoy it. And I watched all of the River Cottage uh, series, TV series. And that was amazing as well. And I absolutely, you know, just, I just reveled in it all. And then we watched the uh, Australian equivalent of, uh, of that River Cottage Australia. And I, to be honest, I, I probably like that even more. And that introduced me not just to the gardening, but the whole sort of community aspect that could come from being self-sufficient and growing your own food. So then, you know, I it's pretty much, you know, but maybe a little bit before that, I watched the Victorian kitchen garden. And I, and I absolutely, the idea of a walled kitchen garden, you know, just amazed me and when we got our new house the current house we're living in it had a walled garden <laughs> that was one of the things i absolutely loved about that house as this walled garden it's obviously not as tall walls as um in these victorian kitchen gardens but in theory it was enough to keep out the cabbage root fly little did i know um at that time so uh yeah so that was kind of where i was and i was you know going along and i was thinking you know i really need to garden more and more and then when I retired of course the natural thing to do was to uh, to really get into gardening because I've been quite keen on it for quite a long time and uh, so one of the first things I did was I kind of turned the back garden into you know probably 50% of it in, into a fruit and vegetable garden and it looked so ugly. I'd got all these frames to protect things from the insects. Because I'd been reading a book, I can't remember which, which one it was, but it was basically, it just terrified me because every everything you grew, there was a pest for it. And so I was obsessed with protecting things from pests because all I'd done was just read the books about it. 
and I hated it. I thought I can't, I just can't have the back garden looking like this. You know, just all these frames and nets and everything. I just uh, couldn't, couldn't be bothered with it. Um, so I was really despondent, and then I, th I realised I could get an allotment. So I got the allotment. I could move a lot of the protected areas to the allotment, and then just leave the back garden free of insect protection netting. And um, yeah, that was the real change. So Debbie and I we watched Fork to Fork, which is a, a t old TV series by Monty Don, and there's a book associated with it. And we watched this, and we're just like, "Oh my goodness, this is what we want. This is this is the lifestyle that we want." And we thought, "There's just no way we can achieve that." You know, we were kind of in our first year of allotment gardening, and it wasn't going particularly great. You know, we were we were harvesting, but it wasn't fantastic. Um, and we realised that this garden lark just wasn't as easy as things like the ornamental kitchen garden uh, by Jeff Hamilton had sort of implied it was going to be. Um, and, you know, a lot of the gardening books that we got, you know, we got the um, uh, allotment, I can't remember the exact title, but I'll, you know, you'll put it, I'll put it up, um, allotment month by month or something like that. Uh, and I love that book. And, it, you know, that's the book I followed when I got the allotment. And it basically step by stepped me through uh, what I had to do each month. And that was, you know, what I did for the first year, really. And I did have some success following that guide. But I realised it was hard work. And, and the things that really showed me that it was hard work was I was reading the Scott Nearing books and Helen Nearing books, The Good Life. Um, and Helen's book, I can't remember the exact title of that one either, but it's basically something like um, Continuing the Good Life and Leaving the Good Life or something like that, which is when Scott died. Uh, and those were amazing books and they introduced me to, you know, deep beds and no dig gardening and all of that sort of thing. Um, and what else was I reading at that time? Oh yeah, The Fat of the Land by John Seymour. And again, hard graft. I realised that, you know, there was hard graft in gardening. And I wasn't really sure that I wanted that hard graft. I'd, I'd retired early through ill health and I'd, I was basically told that I, I couldn't work um, for more than four hours a day. So I needed uh, four, four hours a day, four days a week, so three rest days. Um, so I re realised that when I was gardening on the allotment, I needed something that was a really relaxed style. And so I was a bit scared, you know, reading the, the Scott Nearing and the um, John Seymour books that there was a lot of graft involved. And that's where really Charles Dowding really helped me because I got his book, uh, which was something like Growing Winter Vegetables, and that got me really into growing over winter. And, you know, that was really key to becoming self-sufficient in vegetables and seasonal fruit. I was reading that amazing, that amazing book by Charles, and I read some of his other books. And I'd already started doing no digs. I wasn't really interested in the no dig, but basically just had this really simple approach to gardening, which de-emphasised a lot of the risks. So it de-emphasised a lot of the pest related risks uh, and it de-emphasised a lot of um, you know, like formal crop rotations and things like that, which are really difficult for me because I just, you know, I don't grow things in the volumes consistent with a nice neat crop rotation system and because i have so many different crops in you know i have like three crops in the ground each year well you just can't get an effective three or four year crop rotation system when you've got that much complexity and that much turnover of different crops and you know more brassicas than anything else you know so where do you put your brassicas in your you know your, your follow-on years and things so it, uh, it just didn't work, but Charles was much more relaxed about that. He was basically saying, you know, just manage, just manage things well. Don't put the same things in the same bed, you know, um, following each other. But if you have to do it after, after one year or two years, then don't worry about it. Don't get obsessed about it. So, yeah, I really like that. And there was a book that he wrote, which was about, um, and uh, what was it exactly? It was something like Gardening Myths or something like that. And I, and I really, really liked that book because it just, you know, stopped me worrying so much about things. And now I don't tend to use as many nets and crop protections and things like that. I do use a few nematodes and things to sort of offset that a little bit. So 
that was it probably that that was my life in in tv shows and books um and now what i tend to look at is i, I really like the sm the small scale farmers because they're really great at teaching me how to do things really simple so they kind of go beyond charles dowding um, because obviously they're growing at a bigger scale and so you know what they're doing is like just really efficient ways of gardening so i'm trying to adopt some of their practices uh, and i'm going as far away as i can from the passionate allotmenteers because the problem with the passionate allotmenteers is they're often looking for ways to create work they want the absolute top quality things they look at you know so a lot of these really passionate allotmenteers they spend all the time on the allotment so they're trying to find ways to spend more time there and I'm trying to find ways to spend less time there, if you see what I mean. I still want to be self-sufficient. Um, and I still really love the allotment. But, you know, it's not the centre of my life by any means. And so, but it is my biggest hobby. So I want to really enjoy myself. But at the same time, I want everything to be really simple. So anyway, that's kind of, that's kind of the direction that I'm going in now. Um, so I'm really reading some really interesting books. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, that, but that's a subject for another video. So anyway, I don't know what everybody else's allotment life's like, uh, or sort of journey to allotment things being like in terms of books and TV shows. But you know, if you if you discovered some really great books or some really great TV shows that I haven't mentioned, it would be fantastic to get those in the comments. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you soon.